Welcome everybody. In this presentation, I will tell you the tips and tricks how to manipulate the transesophageal echocardiography probe. All the vendors have the same components of the transesophageal probe. This hand part has the wheels, the small wheel, the big wheel, and the knobs. So the small wheel is responsible for the lateral flexion. So if I move this small wheel from side to side, you can see the motion from side to side. I rarely use it, to be honest. And we have the big wheel, which is the most commonly used one. This big wheel is responsible for anti and retroflexion. Okay. So now we are having the TE probe in hand and we'll put this in the esophagus of the patient. So first of all, how to put it in the esophagus of the patient, the intubation. As you knew from the anatomy that the tongue is a little bit curved. So it is not good for the patient to put something straight in his mouth like this. Otherwise it will hit the soft palate and hit the posterior pharynx and it will be very painful. So it's better to make it a little bit curved to take the curve of the tongue. But at the same time, it shouldn't be too much curved like this by the big wheel. Otherwise it will sweep over the tongue and it will be trapped in the biriform fossa. And this is a blind space. So if the probe tip fell into the biriform fossa, no way you will get inside the esophagus. So what to do? First of all, after the local sedation for sure, start by semi curved course first and then introduce the probe, ask the patient to uh, not to swallow or not to struggle with uh, the tongue in front of the probe first. And then after you enter the oropharynx, you will stop at the os. And at that time, you can ask the patient to swallow. Before that, the patient will not help you by swallowing because the probe is still in the oral cavity. The swallowing will help you if the probe is at the os itself. So once you pass the tongue and then you stop at the os, then ask the patient to swallow. If the patient swallowed, you can see the motion of the larynx here. This one, if you see it, now it is the time to introduce the probe. And that's it. Once the probe came in above the os, release the wheel. Do not flex more the probe. Just leave it as it is. Release your hand and the probe will take the full course of the esophagus. So again, semi curved course till you pass the tongue and then ask the patient to swallow. And then if the patient swallow like that, then introduce the probe more. The probe will go inside. Sometimes if you hold the probe is like too proximal like this, once it enters the esophagus, you may, not, not, you may not be able to see the direction of the tip. It may go like right or left or the probe may rotate inside the oral cavity and you will not know if you are really straight to the esophagus or not. In that case, please take the help of these numbers. The numbers on the back are very helpful. Keep them in vision. So stay seeing the numbers. That means you are seeing the back of the probe because if the probe flicks it, you will see the side with no numbers. Okay. That's why I usually advise not to hold the probe very proximal like this during the intubation. Otherwise, if the, this part entered the mouth, you have to release the probe and then catch it from somewhere else like this still. So the probe may rotate. So it's much better for you to hold it like from 25 centimeters signal or at least 20, then introduce the probe in so you don't have to release it and hold it back again to keep the probe straight in the mouse, okay? So hold it from a distance like 20 and do your curve and then introduce the probe till the end till the patient swallow without leaving the probe and then the patient will swallow and you pass the os, you will be in the esophagus. That time only you are okay to leave the probe and hold it back again to introduce the probe more and more, okay? Another tip, while doing the TEE, it is not good to wrinkle the probe like this. Some operators may forget themselves and just focus on the mouthpiece and they keep their hand very proximal to their body like this. In that case, if you need to rotate the probe or turn the probe from right to left, this torque will not allow the motion to be translated to the tip. In that case, it's better to like make the probe straight as much as you can like this. That's why if you turn the probe from side to side, that will be translated 
to the tip motion. But if it is like wrinkled like that or folded, this torque will not allow the motion to be translated to the tip. I think that's clear. So please don't fold the probe like this while doing the TE. Please make your hand straight. And in that case, the motion will be translated to the tip immediately. One more tip. While doing the transit of JL Echo, don't get used to hold the probe like that. So don't flex your arm. Otherwise, in long procedures, you may get tired. And that will be very painful, especially if you are guiding an intervention in the cath lab, for example. In that case, it is much better for you to relax your arm till the end and hold the probe like that and the motion will be much, much, much easier. So relax your arm till the end like that so you can hold the probe without flexing your arm and you will not get tired. You will just suspend the probe in your hand and keep the probe straight as we said. One more tip. How to hold the probe in your hand? This is very important because sometimes some operators hold the probe in a way if they need to rotate or change the angle, they have to leave the tip of the probe, the mouse hand, and then go to manipulate the angle. This is not advisable. Please keep this hand near the mouse and keep this hand on the controls and you don't need another hand to do this. Actually, how to hold the probe is very important. My usual way, it depends on whether you are doing right or left, is to hold the probe like this. Okay, so by that, you can deal with the wheels, small wheel or big wheel, and at the same time, your two fingers can rotate the angle. So it can manipulate the rotation uh, angle buttons here. So you don't need actually to get help from the other hand. If you are using another way, so you can also hold the probe from the back like this and keep the wheels at the fingertips. And in that case, your thumb will be able to deal with the buttons of the rotation. So keep your thumb close to the rotation buttons and you are looking to the screen. If I need to change the angulation, I'll just press the buttons while looking at the screen. And if I need to manipulate the wheels, I will do this by my fingertips, which I find much easier way to manipulate the uh, control part of the probe. One more tip. During the tilting of the probe from right and left, do not forget your hand that hold the control. Many operators focus on twisting the probe by the hand near the mouse and they start to turn the probe near the mouse only by the right hand or left hand depending on the operator and forget to do the same motion by the control hand. Actually, the motion should be from the control hand, not from the mouse hand. I call this the mouse hand because this is the one near to the mouse of the patient. If you are twisting this alone while keeping this fixed, you are actually damaging, damaging the probe and twisting the probe itself. You are not turning the probe inside the mouse of the patient. And also this torque will let the probe go back to the baseline position once you release it. And that will need a lot of resistance and a lot of force inside the procedure. So please make this hand is a dominating hand, the control hand, while keeping the probe straight. So turning to the right and left should be from this hand and this hand only like supporting the probe like I'm doing now. So if I'm not rotating at all from this hand, I'm just rotating and tilting from the control hand and the tip is rotating because I'm just supporting. Do not use this hand and forget this hand. Okay, if you need to use both, that's well and good. Otherwise, the control hand is the one to turn the probe from right and left, not the mouse hand. Otherwise, you will damage the probe. One last note about the anti-flexion of the probe. Anti-flexion is actually needed just to touch the esophageal wall. Some patients have a large esophagus. So if you have a space between the esophageal wall and the probe tip, you may not have enough contact and the image will not be clear. You will have an air or gap between the probe tip and the esophageal wall. In that case, you may need to slightly anti-flex to touch the esophageal wall, but don't over flex the probe because nobody needs something like this in his esophagus. You are not allowed to do a full flexion like this unless we are inside the stomach with an, an enough space. Otherwise, inside the esophagus, be very cautious while using this. I said before, do not use the lock. Lock is used to fix the probe in a position like that. For example, then I will use the lock so the probe is locked at that position if I use the lock. This is very dangerous. If you did this in the, in the stomach 
and you forget the lock and then you take the probe upwards withdraw the probe this is very dangerous you may enter the gastroesophageal junction and cause like a tear in the esophagus so please unlock the lock and never use it please because it is very dangerous especially in uh, the stomach and in lengthy procedures because a lot of us can forget that well this is the end of this video of how to manipulate the transesophageal echocardiography probe see you if you are interested to learn transesophageal echocardiography three-dimensional echocardiography and the strain and speckle tracking so this is the course you need the advanced comprehensive online course from cic made by myself will cover all the aspects of the advanced echocardiography modalities starting from how to manipulate the transesophageal echo probe the basic transesophageal echo in different diseases the interventional transesophageal 2d and 3d echocardiography inside the cath lab to guide structural interventions plus a lot of videos tutorials step-by-step -step fashion how to analyze your images and your volumes using the offline analysis softwares in the QLab all that plus many updates that will be added to the website whenever something new happened so please if you are interested in learning advanced echo techniques register to this course I am Hani Mahmoud Said.